This is the story of Jet Airways Flight 555. On the 18th of August 2015, a Jet Airways 737 was on its way from Doha to Cochin in India. The plane departed Doha at 7.40 p.m. UTC, and all was well. The plane came into contact with Cochin ATC at 11 p.m. UTC, and by 11.48 p.m. UTC, the plane was over Cochin. The weather at Cochin was hazy. There was a cloud layer at 1,500 feet and another scattered cloud layer at 8,000 feet. Tonight, they'd be making an ILS approach onto runway 27. ILS, or Instrument Landing System, allows planes to follow a radio beacon right down to the foot of the runway. They needed 650 meters or 2100 feet of visibility, and the decision altitude was at 320 feet. If, when you reach the decision altitude on your descent, and you don't have the runway in sight, or if something else is not conducive for a safe landing, you must go around and try again. And that's what this crew did. When they made their approach, the clouds had descended and they were not able to sight the runway, and so they went around. As they joined the holding pattern for attempt number two, they took stock of their situation. Right now, they had 4,700 kilos or 10,000 pounds of fuel. Their alternate diversion airport was Bangalore, and the minimum diversion fuel, or MDF, for Bangalore was 3,300 kilos or 7,200 pounds of fuel. Minimum diversion fuel is the sum of alternate fuel and final reserve fuel. The alternate fuel is the amount of fuel you need to conduct a go-around and then to fly to your alternate airport. And the final reserve fuel is the fuel that you'd need to hold at the alternate airport for 30 minutes flying at 1500 feet. So, when this plane had 3300 kilos of fuel left, it would have enough fuel to fly to Bangalore from Cochin and hold there for 30 minutes at 1500 feet. As Cochin ATC cleared them in for another approach, they considered other airports nearby like Coimbatore and Trivandrum. The first officer told the captain that Trivandrum only had VOR approaches and no ILS approaches. VOR approaches are less precise than ILS ones, but the weather at Trivandrum was good enough for a VOR approach. As they flew away from Cochin to try again, Air India Express Flight 474 chimed in with a weather update. They could see the runway at 1400 feet, but the clouds were moving around quite a bit. Flight 555 tried again, and at 12.17 a.m. UTC, they went around again. Their second go-around. Their fuel level was at 3900 kilos, or 8500 pounds. It was getting very close to the minimum diversion fuel for Bangalore. After their second go-around, the captain decided to change their alternate from Bangalore to Trivandrum. This would allow them to loiter over Cochin for a bit longer to see if the weather would improve. But the first officer warned that it might get a little bit more hazy at Trivandrum. The captain said that if push came to shove, they could fly to Coimbatore, another airport nearby. As they were in the holding pattern, Kuwait Airways Flight 329 went around because they could not see the runway. After the Kuwait Airways plane had gone around, the visibility was at 2,000 meters and there were scattered clouds at 400 feet. After this, ATC let everyone know that visibility at Trivandrum was 3,000 meters and clouds were at 1,500 feet. With this new information, Cochin ATC wanted a go-no-go -go from Flight 555. The captain said that they'd make one final attempt, and if that were to be unsuccessful, then they'd divert to Trivandrum. With that in mind, they lined up for attempt number three. But no joy, they went around. After the go-around, they had 2,644 kilos or 5,800 pounds of fuel. The MDF at Trivandrum was 2,614 kilos. Jet Airways Flight 555 climbed to 21,000 feet, and at 1 a.m. the weather at Trivandrum was 1,500 meters of visibility, 3 knots of wind from 290, and scattered cloud layers at 1,500 feet and 2,500 feet. As they approached Trivandrum, the captain realized that he was too high, and therefore he asked for a 360-degree orbit around Trivandrum to lose altitude. Trivandrum ATC cleared Flight 555 in for a VOR approach. At Trivandrum, they needed at least 2,100 meters of visibility for runway 14. They asked if Trivandrum had high-intensity runway lighting, but they did not. ATC knew that they had to be starting to run low on fuel. But the approach was in vain. They had to go around for a fourth time. This was the first go-around at Trivandrum. After their fourth go-around overall, they had 1,300 kilos or 2,900 pounds of fuel. 40 seconds after the go-around, their fuel levels dipped below 1,300 kilos. 
With their fuel so low, the pilot declared a mayday fuel. ATC immediately set them up for another approach onto runway 14. On their second attempt, they saw that the plane was not lined up with the runway and they had to go around again. If you're keeping track, that's go around number 5 of the night. After their fifth go around, they had 898 kilos or 2,000 pounds of fuel on board. They tried again. This time also, they could not line the plane up with the runway, and at 1.32 a.m. UTC, they went around again. That's go around number six. They now had 662 kilos of fuel on board. They did not have much time left in the air. Faced with the possibility of running out of fuel, the pilot threw the plane into a 180 degree turn. He was going to approach the airport from the other side, that is, he was attempting to land on runway 32. The maneuvers were so aggressive that it triggered the plane's EGBWS systems. As the plane protested with terrain, terrain callouts and bank angle warnings, the pilot lined the plane up with runway 32. Quote, the PIC continued the approach with all warnings and with no visual contact with the runway and finally landed on runway 32 on the seventh attempt at 139 UTC, end quote. On their seventh attempt after throwing caution to the wind, Jet Airways Flight 555 was down safely. Once they came to a stop, the amount of fuel that they had was 349 kilos or 750 pounds of fuel. To put that into context, another go-around would have used up about 130 kilos of fuel. That would have left them with about 220 kilos or 485 pounds of fuel for another approach. They literally had only a few seconds of fuel left. Do you think they would have been able to make it back if they had to go around again? Almost always when it comes to fuel emergencies, the first thing that investigators look at is the fuel loadout. Did they carry enough fuel to complete this flight safely, or did they carry less fuel than legally required? In this instance, they found out that the plane had indeed been fueled with the correct amount of fuel. No issues were found with the amount of fuel that the plane was fueled with. They then looked at why the crew didn't just divert to Bangalore when they had more than enough fuel to do so. They listened to the transmission made by Kuwait Airways Flight 352. They told Cochin ATC that there was a bit of cloud touching the ground, but visibility was around 3,000 meters. This may have convinced the pilots to try just one more approach instead of diverting to Bangalore. Moreover, as the crew decided to try one final approach at Cochin, the weather had started to deteriorate at Trivandrum. But there was a delay in getting this information from Trivandrum ATC to the ATC at Cochin. So as far as Cochin ATC was concerned, the visibility was sufficient for a landing, but visibility in reality was falling. Had they known that visibility was falling, they would have told the crew of Flight 555 about the visibility when they expressed their intentions to use Trivandrum as the alternate. The first officer did warn the captain about this. He did say that if the weather at Trivandrum got worse, then they'd be stuck with an imprecise VOR approach instead of an ILS approach. Quote, the PIC did not value the inputs given by the first officer, that at Trivandrum, ILS was not available, and if the weather drops at Trivandrum, they will be stuck with VOR approaches, end quote. The last part of the puzzle is the fact that Jet Airways did not have a policy pertaining to the number of missed approaches to be made in inclement weather conditions. The pilots were not told where to draw the line. I'm curious, if you're a pilot, does the airline that you fly for tell you to head for your alternate airport after a certain number of missed approaches? The absence of this policy meant that the pilots, in this case, chose an alternate that was not their best option. Looking back on this incident, we see that things would have been very bad for Flight 555 had they not been able to land on their seventh attempt. As with most crashes, a few factors came together in just the right way to turn an ordinary flight into a near disaster. In your opinion, what was a bigger contributing factor to this incident, the pilot's actions or the lack of policies from the airline? Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. A big thank you to Nizam Ashraf Aviation for letting me use his amazing footage on my videos. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe.